folks. Uh, just a moment. I'm talking to Jeremy Strong, and also we will. I will sit down. I'll be talking to and have a performance by one Mr. Ed Sheeran. So stick around for that. But right now, my first guest is an Emmy Award-winning actor you know from Succession, The Trial of the Chicago Seven, and The Big Short. He now stars in Armageddon Time. Look at you, the young man. First day of the rest of your life. You look absolutely gorgeous. I look like a total idiot. No, you don't. I can't even have a normal knapsack. A normal uh, knapsack? Why would you want a normal knapsack when you can have this? This is an attaché case. This is class A1. This, this says, I am ready to work. I come as a student. You just want me to be like you. What? You just want me to be like you. No. No, big boy. I want you to be a whole lot better than me. That's what I want. Please welcome Jeremy Strong. Nice to see you. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. you. I like the uh, I like the autumnal colors. Thank, Thank you for you. matching the moment. Thanks, man. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's it's an honor to be here. Oh, it's an honor to have you. I've, I'm a longtime fan, and I know you don't do this stuff that often. Have you done a late night talk show before? I've never done one of these. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually well, I mean, you're brilliant, and and um, and I love this film so much that I felt compelled to overcome my resistance and, and fear of doing these things. Mm -hmm. um, You'll be glad you did. These are lovely people. Yeah, I no, I can tell. Very, very especially, especially. It also helps if you call them lovely people. They love that right. stuff. OK. Well, what, let's talk about that for just a second, because it is part of uh, uh, the job. A lot of fantastic actors sort of famously don't like this part of it. Like, De Niro is sort of famously difficult interview, because he just he doesn't have anything against it. He just particularly want to be there. Absent the character, here's the big question. Who is Jeremy Strong? That is the question, right? Right. Who do you present? And, and who is talk show Jeremy Strong? And I haven't done a lot of work on that character, so I don't feel like I can confidently play talk show Jeremy Strong. <laughs> I, I know the feeling, because until this show, I was always in character in everything I ever did. And I had to come here and be talk show Stephen Colbert. Right. It took well, me months to pretty, figure it out. You've done pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Nice of you to say. You know, well, we don't have months right the, now. I think the truth is, in a way, honestly, the feeling sometimes is what can you possibly add to the work? Because what you want is for all of yourself to be in the work and to sort of disappear into it. So, sure. So, that's there, and then, you know, what, what can you add to it? I'm not sure. I want to ask you about the work itself, then, which is, how do you... This is, a, this is also part of a broad question, is that your job is an actor, OK? What is that job, in your opinion? <laughs> is that too broad of a question? Do you want me to narrow no, that down? No, it's a great question. I mean, I guess I'd, if I had one word, it would maybe be a vessel. You're a vessel for storytelling. Um, but it's it's really a mystery to me what it what it is and how it works and yeah. and I think kind of protecting that mystery is important too. I had a I had a I had a teacher uh, called Frank Galati who's a director. I also. know Frank Galati. You know Frank? Yeah, I went to school at Steppenwolf in Chicago and. Frank oh well, I went to Northwestern. He was one of my one of my professors Brilliant there. Brilliant director. He fantastic guy, very influential to me. And one one day in class, he was he said this thing. He was being very nice. You know, we were just students at the time. And he goes, those of us in the theater. Um, he said, complimenting us, because those of us in the theater, we sometimes laugh at the people who come backstage and say, how do you remember all those lines? And then he said, but how do you? Who are you that you can do that? And who do you have to become to memorize two hours of something and then go on stage and be okay with people watching you do that thing on stage and, and somehow both be aware of them and not be aware of them at the same time and allow yourself to be beautiful while you do it? Well, I would say as beautiful, but also as fallible. And is flawed. I mean, but the flaws are beautiful too. Yes, I, I agree. Idea. I agree. However, you're portraying on stage, there's a beauty there. Beauty doesn't mean good. 
Right. I mean, you know, I think that's one of the virtues of this of this film, this James Gray movie, because it's a very personal movie. Um, and it sort of speaks to that dictum that the most personal is the most universal. But James was really interested in an unvarnished look at, you know, an, an examination of this family, sort of, as he says, warts and all. Well, this is, this is his story, essentially. It's his story. It couldn't be more personal. I mean, it's essentially an autobiographical story. But well, tell the people, if you don't mind, a, a yeah. thumbnail. It's, um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's sort of both the origin story of, of, uh, of, of an artist and the origin story of our country where we are now in, in 2022. It's, um, it's set in Queens in 1980 and it's a story about a family and these sort of seismic changes happening in the year of this boy's life in this family against the backdrop of seismic changes that are happening in the country, Reagan's election, and this moment of a sort of inflection point in our history. Um, when sort of the market is God sort of took over from, I watched the movie last night only for the second time and I think it's also a movie about integrity and the difficulty of living with integrity and, and sometimes our failure to make choices, to make the right choices, choosing social acceptance over courage. Um, there's some things in the film that if, if you see it, I, I sort of don't want to give too much away, but when, they, when, they when you see, see it, when they see it. <laughs> it's a beautiful film um, uh, that, that sort of, uh, yeah, these characters are, are, are tested in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, their integrity is, is tested. You, you, you were playing his father, essentially, a character based on yeah. his father. Yeah. What was that like to portray someone that is so important to the director? How did you, could you use, did you ask him, like, tell me who, give me my backstory? Yeah, I mean, I think in a way he was reluctant. He's a, he's a brilliant director. I love all of his movies. This is, uh, you know, he was reluctant to, I think, share too much because he didn't want Annie Hathaway and I to play, sort of, to do impersonations of his parents, fair enough. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but your task as the actor really is to really, I think, internalize, understand and internalize and capture the essence of who a character is. And so... I had to, I enlisted spies and I interrogated his family and... Did you, I understand that you asked him the Proust questionnaire. Yes. And the Proust questionnaire <laughs> is a, a famous series of questions that, uh, uh, that Proust came up with to sort of plumb, plumb the depths of someone. Well, you know, and it kind of works. Yeah. You know, if you answer all these questions, I forget how many there are, but a few dozen, mm -hmm. it gives you a kind of composite picture of a, of a person and their worldview. Could I ask uh, you some of the Proust questionnaire questions? Sure, I'm, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> we haven't planned, <laughs> we haven't, uh... We do this thing on the show called the Colbert Questionnaire, which is sort of based on the Proust Questionnaire. Let's do it. No, that's, that's 15 questions, and okay. we're not gonna ask that one. I'm gonna ask you actual Proust Questionnaire we questions. We haven't planned here. this, so okay. these answers may or All right. may not be. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, I would say, Sleeping in and <laughs> being woken up by my three little girls, uh, yeah, in bed. And maybe they bring me coffee. <laughs> what is your current... That sounds... Classic. That's pretty good, right? Quality answer. <laughs> what is your current state of mind? Agitated with a chance of calm. What is yours? Uh, pleasure with uh, anxiety of achievement. <laughs> yeah. What is your most treasured possession? Uh, maybe, um, maybe this bracelet, actually, which is sort of a cuff that has my children... Uh... Their names on it? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. If you were to die and come back as a person or thing, yes, this is what the one it, I've actually thought about this. What would it be? An answer. But I was torn between a hummingbird. Why and, a hummingbird? And a moat of dust in an old bookstore. 
Do you, do you, you don't have to, because I, I, I suppose I like both? a Zen Cohen, you don't want to explicate it, but, but what are the, what is, what's the attractiveness of both of those? Well, have you ever seen a hummingbird? Yes, I have. I mean, they're astonishing, right? Yes, they're, they are. They're, they're astonishing. They're sort of like quicksilver. They, they, their hearts beat like 200. Their hearts beat like yeah. 1,000 times yeah. per second. So, yeah. so who wouldn't want to be a hummingbird, I think? And, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and, and then, I, you know, I love the smell of, a, of an old used bookstore. So sure. a mode of dust in a bookstore sounds like a good life to me. <laughs> what about you? Have you? What? What would you be? Uh, if I could be, a, to if I could be you, a person or a thing? Yeah, if you could come back as a person or a thing. A person. <laughs> All right, the, we, character we got, we got, I, the character I played in the film, his, his answer when I got a, mic, uh, a tape recorder in front of him was a rock. The character? He said a rock? The person it's based on. He said a rock. A rock? Yeah. Wow. Sure. So. Um, I'm contractually obligated to ask you about succession. Okay. Okay. Um, I've asked this. You don't have to applaud my questions. Okay. I've asked this of your co-stars. I'm going to ask you. Uh, beloved shows, I think, match the moment. What moment is succession matching? Uh, I don't think it's a... Gr I mean, it's not a necessarily a happy answer. I think um, true answers often aren't. It matches, I, f I would say, a darkening uh, uh, in our society in a lot of ways. I mean, it's a show about a kind of malignancy at the heart of late-stage capitalism, and what happens when that malignancy, you know, familial trauma becoming societal trauma. I mean, this is a family that's at the heart of the media industrial complex. And in a way, when there's toxicity or damage in, in that family, that's getting pumped out into the groundwater that we're all drinking from. And I think the show is looking at that and taking a hard satirical look at that, but, but, um, but is an indictment of, of that in a lot of ways. How do you think we... Um, uh titrate that poison? Like, how do, how do we, how do, what do you do with a, a poisoned atmosphere like that? Well, that we all breathe in without even knowing. You come up here every night and speak the truth. Uh, jokes. Jokes. Well. That we mean. Jokes, that we but, mean. you know, Je Jesse Armstrong, who's the brilliant writer of Succession, he said something that Emily Dickinson had written, which was that, tell the truth, but tell it slant. And that's jokes. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's, it's not dissimilar. I don't know. I mean, I think you just try and put some light into the world as much as you, as much as you can. Can I ask you one more question? Sure. I want to ask you a question about this, some of the greatest actors that I've always admired in 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 my little my brief acting career before I did this. You you being one of the actors I admire are people who stay in character all the time when they're shooting or be, between shots. I'm curious, you know, people, people admire it and people things like, oh, well, De Niro does it or Dustin Hoffman does it or something like that. What does it do for you? I'm just curious because they've got like what Olivier famously said sure. to uh, uh, Hoffman. Sure. Why not just act it, boy? What does it do for you? I'm just curious. What's the value of that for you? You know, I don't even know that staying in character is, is a way of describing what it is. If anything... I'd say it's just sort of about uh, concentration. And, mm. and um, you know, I guess if I have any w way of working at all, it's kind of the whatever it takes method. Uh, and, and, and you never know what it's going to take. And, and, but for me, it always requires, I think, a, a certain um, quality of attention, which is more about negative space and sort of making yourself a blank slate than it is about trying to be something. Um, you know, Tony Hopkins is in Armageddon Time. Oh, my God. And and the, to be able to do scenes with Anthony And that Hopkins. was just a dream. You know, he, he... I was thinking about him. He's the most wonderful man, the most generous-hearted, illuminated mm -hmm. being. The, one of my favorite authors was a writer named James Salter, who died a few years ago. And the Washington Post said of him once that when he wants to, he can break your heart with a sentence. 
and, and Anthony Hopkins can, can do that and does that in this film. Did you work with him or met him before? No, but of course he's a hero of mine. And, sure. Yeah. I, I, I interviewed him once and I met him once briefly and he t told just instantly, like so kind, told me these fantastic stories about Catherine Hepburn and Peter O'Toole. Oh, he's got great stories. He has yes. A, he has a prodigious memory. He's very playful. You know, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn from him. And a lot to learn from you. Jeremy, thank you, thank you so thank much you. for being here. Armageddon time is in select theaters October 28th. Jeremy Strong, everybody. We'll be right back with Ed Sheeran.